Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this brand new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte Z87X UD5H. This motherboard of course features the Z87 chipset, hence the name Z87X, and that is for the 1150 socket and Intel's new 4th generation core processors, aka Haswell. Bear in mind that's not backwards compatible with socket 1155 or the uh, Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge processors that went along with that. You will need a socket 1150 Haswell processor to be compatible with this motherboard. Apart from that, you have the UD moniker, which means you do have this ultra durable uh, construction. This is actually UD5+. Plus. Uh, you also have Ultra Cool, which is, I assume, referring to the cooling and not how awesome the board looks. Uh, all new heat sink designs on the board. Ultra Performance, you get uh, IR, or an in International Rectifier Digital CPU Power Design and Componentry. Uh, also, you get a UEFI Dual BIOS, so uh, you can autom automatically switch back and forth between those for recovery, or to set up a couple, couple different BIOS settings that you can switch between. You also get 10 USB 3.0 ports integrated onto the motherboard. Around here on the back, we have, well, a bunch more information. I'll try to go over it very quickly for you guys. Going along with the UD5 construction, durable black solid capacitors. They've also gone with a 15 micron gold-plated CPU socket, so that's going to provide uh, more stable and reliable connection points between the socket and the CPU. It's also going to eliminate some resistance there. Uh, you get an Intel NIC or uh, LAN card integrated, also with high electrostatic discharge protection all international rectifier digital power design. So you get IR digital PWMs with IR power stage integrated, integrated circuits. There's the logo for that company right there, and that is providing all digital power to the CPU, the iGPU, as well as the memory. You also, of course, get Gigabyte's patented double copper PCB. I'm actually not positive if that, that's patented or not. I just said that. Uh, you also get some quick buttons on board for power reset, clear CMOS, and all that good stuff. A debug display, uh, an OC PEG or PCI Express graphics SATA connector. You can provide some extra juice to your PCI Express lanes with that. Seven fan connectors on board for all of your case fans to be connected up to. Uh, some icons down there for uh, one fuse per USB port. You also get HDMI display port, DVI, 4K compatibility, uh, three times the USB power for quick charging. Uh, there's a layout of the actual I.O. right there. I'm going to be showing you guys that as well when we get into the box. And then I think some more stuff right up here on the upper left that I missed. You get a gaming headphone amplifier built in, so you can use that to do uh, enhanced audio and actually power some uh, higher impedance headphones. Uh, you also get SLI and Crossfire support, two-way SLI, three-way Crossfire X. Uh, that uh, More info on the dual BIOS right there, as well as the new heat sinks, as well as the on-off charge 2 function. Let's go ahead and get into the box and look at the accessories. Inside the retail box, we have another box. And inside that box, we have, well, I guess sort of another box. This is actually some cardboard packaging that's protecting the motherboard. We're going to finish on that. Let's start off with some uh, look at documentation. All right, so you do get a Gigabyte case badge if you want to put that on the outside of your case. The actual Z87X UD5H ultra durable manual. Tucked away inside, we have our driver disk. It's best to download the latest drivers directly from the Gigabyte website, but you can use this, for instance, to load your NIC driver to get your internet actually working so you can download the rest of the updated versions. Uh, I like the Gigabyte manuals because they give you a block diagram. They tell you where everything is connected. They also give you a layout of all the components that are included, as well as some instructions for assembling the computer. If you're not familiar with that, you should also check out our How to Build a Computer video on Newegg TV. You also get a multilingual installation guidebook. It is uh, pretty much the same thing with different languages. Apart from that, we have some accessories tucked away in here, some SATA cables. We have uh, an I.O. shield, of course. This is a uh, black background. You get some color coding on there to uh, make sure that you know which ports are which. also has a squishy back, which I kind of like, rather than little metal prongs that tend to cut you from time to time. That's also going to provide a little bit of extra uh, electrostatic shielding. Uh, you get an SLI bridge, as this board is compatible with two-way SLI. Uh, if you're going to go with Crossfire X, typically you get those bridges in with your uh, Crossfire X compatible video card. It is a flexi one, so it will extend across multiple different connection points on the motherboard depending on the spacing. Uh, and it's also black, which should match with most builds. You get a total of six serial ATA cables. Let me stand them all up for you. There you go. Uh, all of these are black and all of them have little clasps on each end. They're all going to be SATA revision 1, 2, or 3 compatible, so don't worry if you're plugging in an older mechanical hard drive or a state-of-the-art SSD, you will get the proper performance. Uh, and you also get two that have straight plugs on both ends, and then two that's going to have a straight plug on one end and a 90-degree angled plug on the other. Wait, there's six total, three and three of each of those, respectively. Good catch, Paul. Okay, 
Moving right along, we also have a little add-on piece right here. This is actually a, a USB 3.0 front panel, 3.5-inch uh, bay insert. So if you have an open 3.5-inch bay or an adapter from a 5 and a quarter inch bay, you can drop this in right there. It's got a nice uh, black finish on the front, so it should, again, match with a lot of the black cases that are out these days. Uh, and two USB 3.0 ports. Uh, very handy if you don't have that already on the front of your case. You also get the little 20 pin internal header so you can plug that into your motherboard and make sure those are working. And uh, of course, the screws to mount it properly. And on to the Z87X UD5H motherboard itself. As you can see, Gigabyte has uh, actually, if you've been looking at many of Gigabyte's uh, Z87 boards, they've actually gone with sort of a different color scheme for each one in the line, which gives you a variety if you're looking for a, a motherboard that really matches with your case. Uh, this is towards the high end of their UD series, so this is definitely a very nice motherboard with lots of um, components and features installed. But you have uh, black primarily uh, with some gold highlights as well as some silver highlights going on on some of the heat sinks. Uh, it's also quite shiny as you're probably getting in some of the reflections from our studio lights, but I will try to keep that to a minimum if I can. Uh, also, I wanted to point to, oh wait, I wanted to flip it around backwards first. There's another closer look at the PCB, or at least a look directly at the PCB. Um, a nice flat black color, also Phillips head screws mounting all of your heat sinks on the board. So that aids in removal if you ever need to in the future, if you're going to be cleaning or setting up a water cooling loop or something like that. Um, also wanted to point out the fan headers. There are a total of seven. Every single one is a four pin PWM capable fan header. Let me see if I remember where they all are. Number one is up here in the top left. Number two, system fan header down here right beneath the CPU socket. CPU socket one and two are primary and secondary, also both right there. So that makes four total. Five over here on the right. Six and seven down here on the bottom, which you can probably just sort of see. You'll get a closer look at those in just a second. Actually, how about right now? Let's go ahead and take a closer look up at all of the components on the board. I'm going to start in the bottom right. And uh, first off, of course, you have your color-coded front panel header uh, recessed area right there. You'll notice a little chart beneath it, so it gives you a better idea of what's what. Makes it a bit uh, less necessary to reference the manual. You also have a clear CMOS jumper right above that. Uh, you want to bring your own jumper cap if you're going to clear the CMOS that way. Uh, you also have a surface mounted button, so that might be a little bit easier. It's up towards the top. Uh, USB 3.0, you get two of these 20 pin fr uh, front panel headers for USB 3.0. This one's right here. Uh, the next one, which I'll be coming to eventually, is actually red in the background, which means which means it does support the uh, on-off charge 2 functionality. Uh, there are those two system fan headers, again, both four pinned down there at the bottom. You get a COM header for serial connection, uh, also two USB 2.0 uh, front panel headers. Uh, again, each of those will support two USB ports. Uh, trusted platform module header, which is more for use in business environments, but it is there if needed. A couple of FireWire ports right there as well, so if you do still have some FireWire devices, you got a couple uh, front panel ports available right there. Also front panel audio connection point as well as SPDIF in and out pinouts uh, located right next to that. That's also for the uh, audio componentry on the board and that's located off here over to the left. Uh, it's supported by a Realtek ALC898 codec. Uh, supports XFi Extreme Fidelity and EAX Advanced HD 5.0 technologies and it supports 7.1 channel audio. Uh, let's move along to the PCI Express area. So uh, top to bottom, you got a bunch of ports all right here. Uh, all the way at the top, you got your X1. You get a total of three PCI Express X1 slots. You get a legacy PCI slot right here. That's kind of the bigger one. So if you have an older PCI device, you still can plug it in. And then you, of course, have your full length X16 slot. So one, two, and three of those. These are going to behave differently depending on what you have plugged into them. So you get 16 PCI Express Gen 3 lanes coming off of your Haswell processor. If you have just the top slot plugged in, you'll get an X16 uh, speed out of that. If you have the top two, or this one and this one connected, you'll have X8 and X8, and that's going to be your uh, two-way SLI or Crossfire X configuration. You can also do three-way Crossfire X. If you do populate all three of those, you'll have X8, X4, and X4. Um, and then again, of course, if you're not doing Crossfire X or SLI, you can still populate those, and all of those lane changes will still apply. Uh, moving right along, we have our Gigabyte logoed heat sink right there, which is looking kind of hot right now. Let me rotate. All right. There, nice and shiny. Silver, gold, and black on that. That's going to keep your chipset nice and cool. The chipset's going to be controlling quite a bit of stuff on the board, uh, but of note are these black SATA connectors right here. These are all SATA Revision 3 compatible. That's one of the upgrades from Z87. Uh, you get a total of six of those, whereas before you had two SATA Rev 3 and four SATA Rev 2. 
Uh, with all of the connection here, you're going to have uh, plenty of space for SSDs, and you also get RAID support uh, for, via the Intel chipset for RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. But that's not all. You also have these gray ports right here. These were added on by Gigabyte, and uh, one moment while I reference what the actual chip is controlling those. Ah, yes, it's a Marvel 88SE 9230 chip, uh, and that also has RAID support. So uh, bear in mind that's going to be independent, so you can do an independent RAID configuration here and an independent RAID configuration over here, uh, but that will support, again, SATA Rev 3 uh, items, so up to 6 gigabits per second throughput, and you can do RAID, w RAID 0, RAID 1, and RAID 10 with those connectors. Uh, you might also note right here, that is that PCI Express supplemental power, it's just a little SATA power connector. That's not gonna be necessary in all configurations. Um, so if you are populating a lot of slots in your PCI Express, or I'd say if you're going for a two or three way uh, Crossfire X configuration or two way SLI, you might wanna plug that in. That's gonna provide some extra power to the PCI Express lanes for added stability. Uh, moving up the side of the board, there is that red backgrounded USB 3.0 a uh, 20 pin connector that I already kind of mentioned. Again, that's going to have support for the on off charge 2 function. So it's nice to have that via a USB 3.0 connection point. Uh, to the right of that, you'll notice the 24 pin main motherboard power connector. Next to that, you have a debug LED. Really handy if you're getting your board up and running for the first time. You can reference that to see uh, what problems might be occurring, if any. And uh, the codes there really help you narrow down what, might the, pro what the problem might be. There's that other 4 pin. Uh, system fan header that I already pointed out at the beginning. Uh, some more components up the side of the board. Up in the very top right, you actually have a bunch of voltage connection points. So right there, if you do have a multimeter, you can tap into it right there and get some really detailed voltage readings. Uh, also some surface mounted buttons, so a big red power button. If you're doing an external build, that's extremely handy. Uh, also a reset button, I believe that's reset right there, yes. And then that CMOS, clear CMOS button is the black one right there, and that's probably a bit easier to use uh, than the jumper down at the bottom. Unless you really like jumpers, I guess. Some people really like jumpers. Uh, also, you have DDR3, so all these slots right here, the gray and black. Uh, note that they are color-coded. That is because this is dual-channel capable, and I definitely recommend purchasing your memory in identical sets of two, or if you're going to populate all four, it's usually best to get uh, a quad-channel kit just to make sure everything is going to match up nicely. Uh, populate the matched colored slots first to make sure you get dual-channel support. Uh, you have support for up to 8 gig DIMMs in each slot, so that gives you support for up to 32 gigabytes of system memory total, 1.5 volt DDR3 DIMMs, uh, and then you have official Intel support for uh, up to 1600 speed memory, and then overclock speeds beyond that, uh, which tend to vary quite a bit depending on your processor and the memory that you're using, but uh, I've heard you can go up to 3000, although the 3000 kits are, are really, really rare at this point. But uh, you do have over overclocking capability, of course, as well. Uh, speaking of the CPU, that's right there, or at least the socket for it is. Again, that's a socket 1150 socket and uh, not backwards compatible with 1155. So Haswell fourth generation core processors from Intel only uh, populated right in there. Also around that you have your power delivery and this is where we have a couple more heat sinks. Just tilt it to the side so you guys can get a better look at some of the power phases in there. Uh, that's going to use your power stage uh, ICs uh, for the uh, the MOSFETs and whatnot in there. Um, and again, you have a nice big heat sink on there with a heat pipe running in between them, so that's going to help keep those components cool, which is going to give you more stable overclocking and longer lifespan of the components as well. Uh, finally, in the very top left here, you have an 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector. Uh, and of course, make sure you plug that in from your power supply. Otherwise, you're, you're probably going to have a hard time booting. All right, finally, we have our I.O. over on this side. Uh, we'll start off with this little PS2 port right there. That's a combo for mouse or keyboard. It's um, becoming more of a legacy uh, port more and more so, but a lot of folks might have an expensive mechanical keyboard that's PS2 only, something like with N key rollover, and that still makes it handy to have. Uh, for USB 3.0, six more USB 3.0 ports here on the back. I should mention as far as the USB 3.0 connectivity goes, uh, you have six ports natively from the Z87 chipset. Uh, Gigabyte has actually used a Renesas, I believe. Double checking, yes, a Renesas uh, actual USB 3.0 hub, so that's providing some uh, extra actual USB uh, 3.0 connectivity points right there. And then you have one direct connection uh, via the uh, internal header that's over there uh, by the chipset, I should say. Uh, also, you have your video connections, and uh, if you're not familiar with Intel's newer processors, uh, ever since socket 1156, they've been integrating 
graphics into the processor, and this is how you will access that. So you can actually have your computer set up without even the need for a discrete graphics card. They've upgraded it this time around, so you can actually do triple displays using these connection points right here. They've given you a DVI, uh, an HDMI, a display port, and another HDMI. And uh, as far as resolutions, for the DVI, you can do 1920 by 1200. For the HDMI, if you have a compatible 1.4 HDMI 4K TV, uh, you can actually do up to 4096 by 2160. And the DisplayPort can do up to 3840 by 2160. Uh, also, next to that, you have your Intel NICs, uh, both of them right next to each other. They do support teaming their gigabit NICs. Uh, oh, I bypassed the uh, optical toslink connector right there. That's for your audio out. And then finally over here, you have your analog audio outputs as well as your microphone input. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte Z87X UD5H motherboard featuring the Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket for Intel's fourth generation core processors, aka Haswell. If you enjoyed this video, well, you should subscribe to our Newegg TV YouTube channel. You should also like the video if you found it entertaining and or useful. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.